first of all, welcome. Uh, I'm Mayor Dan Rizzo, for those of you that don't know me. And uh, this is the first of what I know will be several uh, meetings that we'll have to discuss our recently signed host community agreement with Mohican Sun. Um, I appreciate everybody uh, taking time out of their schedules to be here with us this evening. I'd also like to thank the City Council for allowing us the use of, uh, of this uh, chambers uh, so that we can, um, you know, uh, have, this, uh, have this opportunity to uh, show you uh, exactly what it is that Mohegan Sun has uh, in store for us and what the city can expect as a result of this project. Um, before I just uh, 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 go on and, and start to talk about this agreement, I would like to recognize uh, some elected officials that are here, uh, many members of our city council, and I believe some school committee members may be here as well. So in no particular order, um, we have with us uh, city councilor John Powers. <laughs> city councilor Richard Penta. <laughs> city councilor Charlie Patch. City Councilor Ira Novoselsky. <laughs> City Councilor Steve Reardon. <laughs> City Council President Tony Zambuto. <laughs> School Committee Member Michael Ferranti. <laughs> School Committee Member Carol Tai. Uh, from uh, Representative Reinstein's office, we have Rosalie Vincent. And is there any, oh, uh, I see City Councilor Stephen Mirabito, newly elected City Councilor. I think that's it. Anybody else that I haven't recognized? Oh, from Senator Petroselli's office, I'm very sorry. Uh, Donna, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so let me just give you a, a little brief history. I think most of you may know, but I want to give you a little brief history on how we got to this point. Uh, back on November 5th, uh, a vote was taken um, on an initial project that was uh, uh, to be located um, strictly within the confines of the city of East Boston. Um, at that time, that project was to encompass what is the racetrack at Suffolk Downs. Um, therefore, uh, one third of that track sits in the city of Revere. And um, <clears throat> so uh, uh, Revere as a host community had a vote in that. And Revere voted yes. And uh, as a result of that night, uh, where that project could not go forward, uh, we approached the Gaming Commission and asked them, based on the Revere vote, by a numbers almost close to two to one, uh, if, we, if they could pivot that project and bring it onto the Revere side of the Suffolk Downs property only. Uh, we felt as though our host community agreement had language in there that supported it, and fortunately the Gaming Commission agreed with us, but they have said to us that in order for this project to go forward, uh, we would need to go out and vote once again on this new project that's now being situated on the Revere side of the property. Uh, I think as we go forward and discuss the terms of the host community agreement um, and talk about uh, what this project means to our community and really what it means to our region, uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that Revere voters will go out once again and support this project just like they did back on November 5th. That makes me want to say that again. Um, this afternoon, uh, Mitch Edis, the CEO of Mohegan Sun, he will be here, I believe. Oh, he is here. Mitch, good to have you. Uh, I suppose at this point would be a, 
a great time to recognize the CEO of Mohegan Sun, Mitch Edis. Mitch. And also our old friend, uh, the COO of Suffolk Downs, Chip Tuttle. So this afternoon, before I get into this host community agreement, I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, about this afternoon's meeting. And I see Bob Upton, the current president of the uh, Revere Chamber of Commerce, who hosted a luncheon where uh, Mitch Edis was able to lay out his plans for their $1.3 billion development here on the Revere side of, uh, of Suffolk Downs. And uh, uh, it was very, very well attended. We were joined uh, not only by Revere businesses, but our friends from East Boston, who continue to support our efforts here in Revere, our friends from the city of Chelsea, who recently signed a host community agreement, and our friends from Winthrop, who are now working on a host community, a, a, a surrounding community agreement. I'm sorry, Chelsea signed a, sur a surrounding community agreement, and Winthrop is soon to be uh, signing a surrounding community agreement. So we're blessed to have regional support on this project, and uh, I believe that's only gonna get stronger as the days go on. Um, so uh, with that, um, I'd like to just start off by talking about some of the things that this host community agreement will do for the city of Revere. It's certainly going to create jobs. Uh, it's going to create 2,500 construction jobs and 4,000 permanent jobs at completion. It's also going to save 800 jobs at Suffolk Downs because I'm happy to report that just yesterday, uh, Suffolk Downs delivered a letter to the Gaming Commission and committed to another 17 years of racing. <laughs> they, to keep the long-standing tradition and those 800 jobs that, the long-standing 78, close to 80-year tradition in place uh, assuming that this license is granted to Mohegan Sun, and based on their plan, the 16,000-page document that was delivered to the Gaming Commission uh, uh, back on December 30th, there's no doubt in my mind that the Gaming Commission is gonna have a very difficult time to vote against this project here at Suffolk Downs. Believe me when I tell you. It's going, it's going to generate significant revenues to the city. Uh, this is in addition to the job creation. It's going to generate significant revenue to the city. It's going to stimulate our local economy, which I'll get into a little bit later. And it's certainly going to uh, uh, improve our roadways and infrastructure in ways that we would never otherwise have the resources to do. Some of the key elements of the host community agreement. There's guaranteed minimum payments that escalate in, uh, in the first three years from $25 million a year to $30 million uh, from, uh, I believe, from, uh, to $30 million during the first, after the first four years of casino operations. That those are minimums, a $30 million minimum, uh, regardless of what type of gross gaming revenues are obtained by Mohegan Sun. Um, if they reach their uh, estimates, which, uh, uh, as many of you may know, before, you know, the Gaming Commission's own studies have shown that there are $3.1 billion of, avail of available gaming dollars in the state of Massachusetts. No doubt this eastern region is going to be amongst the most lucrative. So using those, using the Gaming Commission's numbers and outside studies that have been done, if they do a billion dollars, which we think they will and they feel they will, the city of Revere will receive $40 million annually. That's each and every year. That is transformation. Before, before they ever open their doors, before they ever receive $1 in gaming revenues, the city of Revere will receive $33 million in upfront payments. Um, And there will be, and, the, and, the, and there will certainly be a, 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 a job preference. Uh, you know, we we anticipate anywhere between 800 and 1,000 jobs for Revere residents, uh, which really, I mean, that's going to that's going to change lives 
for many, many families here in our community. It's going to be They're helping us pay for the new Harry Della Russo Stadium, where we're breaking ground there in February. They're going to help us. Uh, uh, we had to bond. We received a $2.72 million parks grant to get to, to uh, kickstart it. The city council, in their wisdom, uh, allowed us to bond for the balance. But we won't have to use that bond if this project comes to fruition, because as part of our host community agreement, Mohegan Sun is going to pick up the tab on that and help us finish that project. We have committed a million dollars to our public schools to help Dr. Dakin and the school committee um, with extended learning and ELL and uh, after school programming and all the other things that, that uh, our students, all 7,000 of them, desperately need. Uh, we also have committed $2 million each to the, both the police and fire to bring our, our resources up to where they should be, where, you know, uh, years ago, we had 118 police officers on the street. Today, we have 90. My goal was to get that back up to 118 or even exceed that number, and we're going to be able to do that. Um, and make this community safer, safer than it is today. Um, <clears throat> and also, with respect to the fire department, and I know our fire chief is here, Gene Doherty. Uh, fire, Gene. Uh, Gene and I have talked about, uh, along with Councilor Powers, about uh, the possibilities uh, of opening up that Pines Fire Station that I know has been closed for an awful long time. So, uh, and that's going to play right into us building up our beachfront. I mean, that's what we've been trying to do. We have the most beautiful beachfront probably on the entire eastern seaboard. For any of you that have ever spent any time on Revere Beach, walking down there in the morning or at night, uh, with all the uh, improvements that have been made over the years, I mean, it's one, and certainly with the harbor cleanup, it's one of the more beautiful beaches that I have ever seen in my lifetime. And I, I'm not saying that because I'm the mayor of the city of Revere. I'm saying that because I truly believe that. If you go down there and you take a walk along the beach, it is spectacular and probably the most underutilized beachfront on the entire eastern seaboard. That's going to change as a result of this project. Um, <laughs> We talked about, in, we talked about in, infrastructure improvements, roadway improvements. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from people uh, who don't support this project, they talk about traffic. And, you know, let's put this in perspective. That site at Suffolk Downs is a 160-acre site. Anybody that thinks that that's just going to stay empty forever is just fooling themselves. That, if, if this project doesn't go forward, something is going to go there. I can assure you of that. The landowners are not going to let it sit vacant because people don't want to uh, lose their view of Boston or they don't want to, because they don't want to see any more traffic. Something's going to go there. And uh, I guess by comparison, the Square One Mall, if you look at the traffic numbers, and by the way, when the Square One Mall was being built, people in Melrose and Saugus were going crazy. They thought their life was going to change. Now I'm not sure many of them would, would ever want to see that mall leave. It's, it's become a real convenience and part of the community. And guess what? The traffic hasn't changed one bit. And the traffic at the Square One Mall is equivalent to the traffic that's going to happen here at Mohegan Sun. So you can put four Square One Malls in, in, in Suffolk Downs, okay? And, and we are not going to get one dollar in road improvements if that happens. I can guarantee you that. They're spending 40 to 50 million dollars to make our roads better and safer and alleviate traffic, not make it worse. <laughs> They're going to improve uh, Route 1A by widening it and uh, 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 creating a Boardman Street flyover, okay, or a, possibly a superior uh, and improved version of that as approved by Mass DOT. Uh, that's at a cost of about $25 million. That's private money. Uh, route 1 and the Route 16 interchange, okay, people will not be coming through the city of Revere through Bell Circle and down to Brown Circle and down to Copeland Circle to get to Route 1 anymore. They'll be able to get right off at Route 16, 
take a left, continue on Route 16 West, and go up onto Route 1, down by where the old prime time or Plaza Garibaldi is. So, you know, that is going to alleviate traffic down Squire Road and that big bottleneck that we get through Bell Circle and, and, uh, and down around, uh, as I say, Brown Circle and Squire Road. Traffic is going to improve. And I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's what 40 or $50 million can do. And that's 40 or $50 million that we here in the room don't have to pay for. That's going to be on the dime of Mohegan Sun. Um, to, to our friends in Beachmont, uh, they're going to get close to $4 million in road improvements at Donnelly Square, which I know Richard Councilor Pent is uh, very uh, happy about and, and, and has been in my office day in and day out asking about uh, during these negotiations. And, and, uh, and uh, you're going to see a real improvement there at Donnelly Square. And again, this is as a result of moving this project into Revere. So, you know, uh, we were going to get improvements before, but now, because of the way it's situated, we had, to, we had to push them harder. We had to push them to make sure that we protect the interests of our residents in Beachmont and throughout the rest of the community, which we have, and now they have committed as I say, almost $4 million in Beachmont. Um, North Shore Road, Revere Beach Parkway, and Tomasello Drive. Uh, I know uh, another counselor, Councilor Novoselsky. Again, he's a permanent fixture in my office. He was driving us very hard there. And we're going to be making uh, over a million dollars worth of improvements right in that area. So as I say, uh, the traffic argument, in my mind, uh, is you know really is, as far as I'm concerned out the window because you know look I'm the mayor of this city would I would it be good for me to welcome in a project that is going to hurt our city I mean it, it it just wouldn't make sense we I sat on the city council for 12 years and now I'm mayor for a couple of years um, it's not it's not in my best interest it's certainly not uh, in the interest of job security for me. If I bring in development that's going to be negative for our city, we have, we have uh, studied this. We have studied our studies. We, we commissioned our own transportation studies. We did peer review in the city of Boston when, when they were going through their, their, uh, their deliberations. Uh, and we've worked, with, uh, we've worked with Suffolk Downs and their traffic experts. So we have, we have covered, we have spent years, literally the last two years, working on this to make sure that we're protecting the interests of our residents. So, you know, uh, I mean, when, I, you know, when people talk about traffic, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, the traffic I see right now, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, is traffic that's here now, okay? I mean, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, you can go many other places in our area where you're not going to find certain amounts of traffic, okay? But this project is not going to be the cause of uh, any type of escalating traffic. When you spend $40, $50 million to make our roadways better, I think you're going to actually see traffic improvements. That's my, that's my belief. Um, the financial terms, I want to go back and talk about the finances for a second. The minimum that the city of Revere is going to re receive over the next 15 years, the minimum, if everything goes wrong, is $429 million. I mean, that's a staggering amount of money for a community like the city of Revere. The more, the more realistic numbers, the more realistic estimates that I think and that we all believe uh, that we'll realize is over $600 million. And, uh, and that, that really, uh, it's... it's uh, it's incredible. I, I mentioned the $33 million of upfront payments, um, you know, and uh, uh, you can see over here, um, you know, years one through three, if you want to put that up on there, uh, whoever's, you know, years one through three, we're guaranteed a minimum of $25 million. Years four through six, we're guaranteed a minimum of $28 million. And years seven and after, a minimum of, of $30 million a year. Um, but again, those numbers are out the window if they meet their projections, which I believe they will, uh, and they believe they will. Now, jobs. 
I mean, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that probably one of the first reasons that I embraced this project, it had nothing to do with the 429 million or the over 600 million. I mean, that's a great benefit to the city. There's no doubt about that. But the first thing that I thought about was number one, salvaging the jobs that we have at Suffolk Downs, people that have been there for close to 80 years. I mean, everybody in this room probably either currently works there, knows somebody who's worked there, had a family member, close friend that worked there during their lifetime, um, you know, that, that uh, uh, in my opinion, would be such a travesty to lose this long-standing tradition that this city has embraced, like I say, for eight decades now. Uh, so, so it's always been my, my hope that we would save Suffolk Downs and save racing in the Commonwealth. Um, and the other thing, obviously, was putting, putting people to work in new jobs in virtually every avenue, whether it's finance, whether it's transportation, whether it's maintenance, whether it's a uh, 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 hotel restaurant. There's going to be plenty of opportunities uh, for people to go to work. And, you know, jobs really continues to be uh, number one priority with respect to economic development. And, um, you know, uh, I remember Richard Fields coming up to me. This is a couple of years ago. And he said to me, he said, Mr. Mayor, what's it going to be like when I walk in your office and I say, you have a thousand jobs to give out and, uh, you know, start sending them our way. I mean, what a great opportunity for our community. There is nothing more liberating than to give somebody a job and give them a chance to make a good living. And, and, and as Chip and Mitch uh, will tell you, uh, I'm probably using the wrong terminology. These aren't jobs. These are careers. These are good paying jobs. As much as people may try to minimize the jobs and try to make it like everybody's just going to work in housekeeping, that is not the case. The average salaries are predicted to be anywhere between $45,000 and $50,000. And by way of comparison, uh, I was talking to Mitch, and Mitch, please correct me if I'm wrong, they did a study because they, they've been in operation now in Connecticut now for a long time. So they really didn't know what their average salary was. They have a whole budget and how they work. The average salary, I think you said, was sixty-six thousand. Is that what you told me, or uh, am I am I off on that? Or fifty-six thousand. I'm sorry, fifty-six thousand dollars. That is not. I mean, that's not an entry-level job in my mind. That that is a good job. That is a good living wage for people to be able to take advantage of, and. Um, you know, I, I, I've, got, I've got resumes uh, on my desk right now. I probably have three or 400 resumes, people that come in all the time looking for work. And what a great opportunity to be able to say, you know, we have a place right here in Revere that's going to employ 4,000 people. Just a great opportunity. <laughs> uh, 10% of the construction jobs, uh, estimated to be 2,500, uh, will go to Revere residents. That's in our agreement. But that does not mean that if we go above that number, they're going to say no. We, you know, our, if more than 10% of, of, uh, of, of people in the trades go and seek work uh, during the development process, that they will not be accepted because we hit our mark of 10%. That's just a minimum, OK? So that's 250 trades. Tra uh, tradesmen here in the city that will participate on that project at a bare minimum. At completion, 20% of the jobs, that's 800. 800 of those jobs will go to Revere residents. 75% um, of all permanent jobs there, which would be 3,000 jobs, will go to people who reside within 15 miles of the facility. And that is because this truly is a regional project. I mentioned earlier our friends in East Boston and our friends in Winthrop and our friends in Chelsea. Okay? They have been our friends and neighbors for a long time, and they should participate in this project with us and enjoy all of the benefits that it's going to bring. Um, so uh, uh, I'm very, very happy that we included that in the language in our host community agreement. 
Uh, I mentioned Bob Upton earlier from the Chamber of Commerce, and I see Ed DeVos here and other members from the Chamber um, that uh, uh, have embraced this project from the beginning. And uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think for good reason, because uh, we have required Mohegan Sun to, to hold vendor fairs um, and spend a minimum of $10 million a year in the city of Revere on goods and services. For the sake of comparison, um, and I don't want to uh, 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 mention the other applicant for the Eastern Region license, but they have, in their host community agreement, required uh, our competitor to spend $50,000 a year. So uh, clearly a big boon for our business owners here in the city who contribute so much day in and day out to the fabric of our community. So we're very, very happy that Mohegan Sun has agreed to those terms. And by the way, again, to keep in uh, uh, with the same spirit as we did with the jobs and in helping our entire region, uh, again, Lynn, Winthrop, Chelsea, East Boston, $50 million will be spent on local businesses within a 15-mile radius. So that's going to be a significant boost to our regional economy, which is very, very important to all of us. Um, <laughs> I talked about the $2 million that they're going to be kicking in for the renovation of Harry Della Russo Stadium, but they're also putting another million dollars in to help kickstart a new and desperately needed youth center for the youth of our community. Um, I have to say, I had a group of high school kids in my office maybe about a year ago um, who uh, gave me a PowerPoint presentation of what a new youth center would mean to the youth of our community. And it was very powerful. I wish I could have had everybody here in that room with me so you could actually see uh, what it would mean to the kids in this community. You know, we, I hear people say, oh, there's kids hanging around here or kids hanging around there. Well, we have to give them some place to go and some place that's safe and some place where they can, where they can uh, uh, you know, just be themselves without having to worry about being out on the streets. And this new youth center, that I'm going to commit to right now is going to do just that. Um, they're also going to commit $250,000 annually for promoting economic development in the city. And my economic development director, John Festa, I'm sure is very happy about that. And I see our city planner, Frank Stringy, here. Um, you know, uh, we talked a little bit about traffic improvements a little while ago, and I just want to uh, acknowledge our city planner, Frank Stringy. When we were initially, when we were initially uh, working with the city of Boston, uh, discussing, like I said, we did peer review with them with respect to traffic studies, um, Boston officials came to me and said that Frank Stringy actually led those discussions about traffic with the city of Boston. So Boston has nothing on our expertise here locally in the city of Revere, and Frank deserves an awful lot of credit for his expertise. And, uh, you know. uh, there's some, some provisions uh, that would call for a reopener. And this is... Uh, this isn't real, uh, 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 you know, this isn't something that's, uh, that's going to be a real big deal to most of you, but it has to be in the agreement, okay? And so reopeners um, would be for a few different reasons. One is uh, if Mohegan Sun proposes a substantial modification uh, on or off the current property site or reduces the size of the project. When we first started talking, on the night of November 5th, when we started discussing what we could do, um, uh, uh, you know, to go forward, to move forward from that day. Um, you know, obviously Suffolk Downs went out to start to, you know, seek out a gaming partner. And one of the things that I remember them saying to me was, uh, well, we're not sure if it's going to be at the same scope or the same magnitude. We don't know if it's going to be the same project. 
And I got a little pit in my stomach. I'm like, oh, I hope this isn't a real scaled down, watered down version of what they were uh, proposing. It was quite the opposite. They were actually spending more than they were going to spend on the initial project. $1.3 billion of investment here in the city. Just tremendous. So I don't think we're going to be talking about a reduction in the size of the project anytime soon. Uh, or another reopener provision would be uh, with respect to the regulations of the Gaming Commission uh, if they require that additional terms need to be negotiated. Uh, in that case, obviously, we need to reopen. Um, <clears throat> so what do we need to do between now and February 25th? Well, we're going to continue to do public outreach. We're going to continue to talk to our friends, talk to our neighbors, talk to our residents about what this means to our community. Uh, we have a meeting uh, scheduled, We obviously, in addition to this one, uh, on Saturday, February 1st at 11 a.m., same place here, uh, where, again, we will uh, once again give the opportunity for our residents to come up here and ask questions and, uh, uh, you know, offer comments uh, about the project. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's our goal and has been our goal since we started this whole discussion about expanded gaming here in Revere. We always wanted to make it an open uh, uh, and transparent process that gives, that gives our residents a chance to weigh in on what they think is important and what the city should be doing with regards to uh, moving forward with this project. What is important to the city of Revere? What should we be thinking about? What should we be looking at? And that's in regards to whether it's finances, jobs, transportation, local investment, all those things. And we have received a lot of what you see in this agreement uh, is a result of many of you here in the room that have offered input. Uh, you know, and, uh, and let me say this, as I look around at some of the faces and some of the people here, um, we would not be in this position that we're moving forward, as I say, we submitted an application and now looking to go to another referendum on February 25th without many of you that are here in the room. You all deserve a round of applause for yourselves. We, 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 as, as supportive, as supportive as our elected leaders have been and as supportive certainly, you know, the city council's been tremendous. Uh, I remember the gaming commission uh, asked me at one of our meetings, uh, he asked me specifically, what does the city council feel about this? And it was, so, it was such a relief for me to be able to say that the city council unanimously voted a vote of confidence on our host community agreement. It was so great to be able to do, and I thank them for that. I thank them for that vote of confidence. <laughs> Couple people, and then I'm gonna open it up to some questions, but I want to acknowledge some other people that are here. I already talked about my terrific economic development director, John Festa. He's like a one-armed paper hanger, and he's, uh, he does a tremendous job for me. In fact, I had a developer tell me that I was working him too hard and to give him some time off. So, but John's just fine. You know, he'll keep doing what he's doing. Our director of finance, he's kind of the go-to guy and really spent two hours on the phone with, uh, I believe, one of uh, Mohegan's guys, uh, one, of, one of your finance guys, and they spent two hours to finalize this host community agreement. And uh, you don't want to negotiate with George Anzoni, okay? Uh, George drives a very hard bargain, but really, really stood up for our city. Uh, and these two attorneys I have behind me, our own city solicitor, Paul Capizzi, and, um, and our outside legal counsel from Mirac O'Connell, Brian Falk, who, again, did a tremendous job. These guys, at the end of the day, we have a document, okay? I keep talking about the host community agreement. We have a document, but that document is meaningless unless it makes legal sense. And these two guys put it all together so that we have an ironclad agreement that is going to secure the well-being of this community for decades, if not generations, to come. City Councilor Jessica Janino snuck in somehow. I want to recognize her. And so now, 
um, I am more than willing, and I have people behind me more than willing to uh, answer questions if you have them. So uh, who is going out and seeking the questions and comments? Do I have somebody? Uh, we, no, you know what? I'm doing that. So, uh, okay, first question. Morris, what do you have? No, no, no. You just asked me the question. I'll repeat it. You know what? Here, I'll walk over. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not running for office, you know. <laughs> thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Don't get too fond of that. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking my jokes away. <laughs> no, as a senior citizen, we need a new van. We got an old van, and I'm sure the money coming in from the people uh, from Mohegan Sun coming into the city of Revere, that would give us the money to help our senior citizen. Am I correct in saying that? Morris, um, let me say this. If, if Mohegan Sun is granted a license, you'll get more than a new van. I will make that senior center the number one senior center in the whole state of Massachusetts. How you doing, Doc? Um, Mayor Rizzo, I am um, a spokesperson with Don't Gamble on Revere. I'm opposed to the casino coming here. Um, one question that I have, when I read the host community agreement, um, and by the way, I am a resident of Revere. I was born and raised here. Been here my whole life, 29 years. Um, in it, like a lot of the promises that you're saying tonight, and like they are pretty impressive, but um, I read a line in there that kind of, um, made me feel uneasy that the only two parties that could enforce the community agreement was the city of Revere as a government and the developer, and that there was no third party that could enforce this host community agreement, and that it could be, re, um, it could be renegotiated at any point if, if um, there was a chance that the casino or the city felt as though the terms that were agreed upon were no longer agreeable and they needed to reopen it. Okay, so there are certain conditions that allow for reopeners. Uh, Brian, would you like to take a stab at that? Sure, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in addition to the city and uh, Mohegan Sun, the Gaming Commission also is authorized to enforce the terms of the agreement. Because one of the conditions that we're requiring is that Mohegan Sun has to ask the commission to make full compliance with the agreement a binding condition of their license. Um, their gaming license will be the most valuable thing that they have. They'll do everything they can to make sure that gaming license remains intact. And one of those things they'll be required to do is to um, fully comply with the terms of our agreement. Um, regarding reopeners, as the mayor stated, there are a couple specific areas where we're able to reopen the agreement. Um, the agreement can be amended, and any agreement can be, but both parties have to agree to do that. But the reopener is triggered by a certain event. The parties have to go back in and reopen when those events take place. Um, and those are specified in the host community agreement summary that we have available. Thank you. Lewis? Lewis Chow, only 410 Park Avenue. I lived here all my life. My father lived here all his life. His father lived here all his life. So I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this wonderful host community agreement. You've remembered the people at Suffolk Downs in that agreement. You've remembered union work. And union work means good wages and good benefits, and I appreciate that. But the, <laughs> to me, as a, as a resident of Revere, this question comes down to whether there's going to be a casino in Revere or there's going to be one in Everett. Could you please tell the folks here what benefits, what job guarantees we have from Revere, for Revere, and what benefits the taxpayers have if the casino goes to Everett. Was that a trick question? <laughs> so the question talks about, OK, the whole notion about expanded gaming, OK, there's people, if you're philosophically opposed to gambling, I mean, right now at Suffolk Downs, they're gambling probably as we speak, okay? They're, they're gaming down at the 7-Eleven uh, on Kino, our, our, our scratch ticket. So, uh, and now, through legislation, uh, expanded gaming is now allowed in Massachusetts. And there's going to be three casino licenses that are granted. 
So as Mr. Cialone just said, it's not a matter of if there's going to be a casino or if there's not. There's going to be one in the eastern region. And the question comes down to, is it going to be in our neighboring city of Everett or is it going to be in Revere? If it goes to Everett, those people that are worried or if they're, if they're worried about traffic or they're worried about crime or they're worried about all these things that you know, we've addressed through our host community agreement, um, those fears uh, are still going to be there in their minds. The difference is we don't have anything to even help support the solutions to those fears because all the jobs, all the revenue, all the local investment, all the infrastructure improvements go to Everett. Revere gets nothing. So, 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 so even if you're not, if you're a Revere resident and you're worried about the future of your community, I mean, it makes, you know, I mean, like, it makes no sense, at least to me, why you would allow a project, a $1.3 billion project, to just walk a mile and a half across the road and the city get nothing for it. Doesn't make any sense. So, in any case, uh, but, but listen, and I do want to say this, and this gentleman just asked a question, and we have always been respectful of people's opinions. Everybody is entitled to have their opinion on a project. That's, that's democracy, okay? I mean, we don't have to embrace each other's opinions, but I think we should be allowed to express our opinions, okay? And, uh, you know, people have reasons why they want to vote for something. They have reasons they don't want to vote for something. You know, uh, I just happen to think that to turn away $600 million and 4,000 jobs would be foolhardy on the part of the city of Revere. So that's the reason that I support it. Um, Is the money going to go into the beach? I mean, being, being around, I'm, I'm almost on the beach, like probably a lot of people here are. Is there going to be money put into the beach, fixing it up, and keeping it maintained? Well, well, well it's interesting. Uh, thank, thank, you, thank you for that question. You know, as far, listen, any money that's going to be spent, okay, I mean, you know, I've talked about, I've talked about uh, tax reduction. Okay, stabilizing property taxes here in the city of Revere that most people want to see happen. Um, I've talked about I've talked about water and sewer rate reduction. Okay, that we'll be able to provide. Um, with respect to but with respect to actual expenditures, okay, all that has to go through the city council. Okay, do I have do I have a lot of plans? on how we're going to utilize the anticipated $40 million a year? Of course I do. In fact, by ordinance, uh, in, uh, uh, half of all revenues from expanded gaming have to go in to a capital improvement fund that the city has created so that we can take on capital improvement projects. Maybe some will be on the beach. Maybe some will be in Beachmont. Maybe some will be in the Point of Pines, maybe some will be over uh, in the Ward 6 area. There's plenty that we can do with $20 million a year. I mean, I know, for example, we talked about the need for a new high school. You know, we built all these brand new elementary schools, all these brand new middle schools, and then we send them into a high school that was built in 1972. So that's something, but you know what? I'm not sure how the city can pay for that right now. Uh, unless we start to get some serious economic development and serious uh, upturn. And, and you know what? If that happens, it's going to be at bare minimal, if any, cost to the taxpayer, because we'll have the resources to be able to do that and give the 7,000 students in our school system the best chance for success and the best 21st century education. And so if you have ideas, if you have ideas, Mr. Coco, about projects or things that you'd like to see that would be publicly funded on the beach or resources that are needed on the beach, I would say talk to your city councilor or talk to my office and we'd absolutely look into those. But um, safe to say we're going to be able to do an awful lot of things and along those same lines and getting back to economic development, this is not just a one project uh, proposal here. As a result of this development going forward, 
you're going to see a lot of additional development uh, 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 take shape down, in particular, along the beachfront. You're going to see that two and a half mile stretch both on Revere Beach Boulevard and on Ocean Ave. You're going to see that transform in a very, very positive way. And so, that, you know, again, those are going to create, those opportunities will create jobs. Those, those opportunities will create additional tax revenue. And so, really, that's why when I use the word transformational, it's not just a word. It's not just uh, some terminology that I'm throwing out there to make it sound better than what it is. This is reality. And again, John will tell you, I mean, almost every week there's somebody new showing up in his office that's talking about the possibility of a hotel, the possibility of a new restaurant, the possibility of, you know, new, new uh, you know, luxury condominiums, the possibility, you know, it's just endless retailers. I mean, we get, we get weekly, weekly uh, visits from people that are interested in investing in Revere because they know this is the place to be over the next five to ten years. In fact, Revere just recently was voted one of the best places to live uh, by the Boston Globe. I think we're in the top 13 places, they said, in terms of uh, investment and, uh, and value. So, um, you know, I just see that continuing, Joe. Uh, next question. My question, Mr. Mayor, is that with the tax relief to the, uh, the residents of the city, would that tax relief also include the uh, small business owners that own property, like the small stores that are on the uh, on Broadway? Right. Well, well, you know, when I say when I say stabilizing or reducing taxes, that includes everybody. That's residential and commercial taxpayers. But but again, the city council has always has always uh, voted to give the maximum shift so that residential taxpayers get the best possible break we can legally. So, uh, you know, you know the, highest, the highest shift possible is shifted over to the commercial taxpayers. And so, you know, be, because, but, but the unfortunate thing for a city like Revere right now is that we have a very, very small percentage of commercial taxpayers. So the burden, unfortunately, has fallen on the backs of the residential taxpayers which, you know, uh, we're limited, obviously, by Proposition 2 and a half. So oftentimes that limits our ability to provide, you know, to provide services to the extent we want to. A project like this allows us to, you know, increase manpower, as I said, not only in the police and fire, but our public works department. I mean, how many people have called for sidewalk, called for a pothole, called for a tree trim, called for a tree removal? You know, and, you know, oftentimes you're told, we're going to put you on the list because we don't have the resources, we don't have the manpower, we don't have the money. I mean, th this changes that. This changes it, you know, and uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't emphasize it enough what a game changer this is for the city. Uh, no, we've only have a couple of TIF agreements. One's in place right now with NECO, and the other one uh, is with the proposed market basket, and obviously they're tied up in litigation right now, so, um, so we'll... Uh, that's a, that's a whole nother uh, meeting like this when we talk about that. So, uh, uh, questions? Yes, sir. And um, kudos to you and, and your team. Uh, you know, I remember sitting up here with you on November 5th when it looked pretty bleak. And, um, and I think I said it was going to take a last-minute Brady-like pass to, uh, to win this game. And like the Red Sox, they never gave up until it was the last out. You guys haven't given up, and kudos to you guys. During some of the previous discussions, one of the questions and one of the concerns that people raised was automobile insurance. You gave a definition and, and a description about how automobile insurance might or might not be impacted. I think, I don't know if you remember that discussion, people were concerned. Are our rates going to go up because there are more people coming into the city and more accidents? You said no, and, and maybe it's worth reiterating why. Well, well so. Auto insurance rates, okay, first of all, it's unlike it was in years past. O obviously, rates are competitive, so you can now shop for your auto insurance. So, but that aside, just as a, uh, you know, just as the, ma you know, as a matter of, 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 of you know, what, what impacts auto insurance rates. I mean, clearly, the number of accidents in a community 
by, you know, at fault accidents by, uh, by, by any residents, whether it's residents in Revere or Chelsea or East Boston or Saugus, that's going to have an impact on the rates, okay? But again, there's this, mis there's this misconception out there that if you get in an accident and it's not your fault, but it happens in Revere, that somehow that falls back on Revere. That is untrue. What happens is if you are at fault in an accident, you could be at fault in an accident up in Burlington, if you're a Revere driver and you're at fault, that gets charged back to Revere, and vice versa. If somebody in Burlington hits you pulling out of your driveway and they're at fault, that goes back to Burlington. So really it comes down to, okay, is there going to be more traffic and could that impact our rates? Well, you know, somebody could make that argument. Well, there's going to be more traffic on the roads, but our roads get safer because of this project. So in spite of maybe a little increase in traffic, like I say, that would be the equivalent of a, a square one mall going up there, um, you're going to get some serious road improvements. I didn't see many road improvements go in when square one mall went up. There might have been maybe a, a little turnout. But other than that, you know, you're going to see serious 40 to $50 million worth of road improvements here in the city of Revere. And I would argue, and again, I don't have a crystal ball, so please don't take this as gospel. But I would argue that if our roads get safer, um, that should actually have a positive impact on rates, not a negative one. So, you know, um, for what that's worth, that's in, in my humble opinion. Um, any, other, any other questions? Okay. Um, I'll go over here. Oh. Go ahead, come in. True, go ahead. Go ahead. This mic here. Hi, this is my first meeting I ever attended with the city of Revere, but I've been a resident for four years now. I love Revere. Um, I was concerned, though, with the jobs for Revere. Um, I'd like to re-enter the workforce, come out of, you know, disability, come back with my credentials, and maybe have some kind of training to help me upgrade that, and then take on one of those positions that offer enough money to live on. You know, so I'm concerned with um, being part of that, you know, and I would love to see the casino come here because, face it, you know, ready or not, if we don't take the opportunity, somebody else will, and we'll lose. Yeah. Well, so, so and that's a very good question, and you asked somebody, quite honestly, that I think about as I negotiate and think about this host community agreement, somebody that could actually use a job and need a li and, and actually get a lift. Uh, we have been working with Bob Rapucci from CAPIC, who is a who is a great public servant, and we have I have formally committed to him that if this project comes to fruition, and I I'm sure I'll have the support of my colleagues here in the city council. Uh, we've committed a million and a half dollars to him for job readiness to help prepare people to get into the workforce and take advantage of the many jobs that the Mohegan Sun is going to provide. And hopefully, you'll be able to take advantage of that if this all comes to fruition. So, uh, you know. Yeah, I actually got. Two comments, no questions. Um, the first, you did a great job. You're doing a great job. We really appreciate it. The second comment is something you said today about get, being able to give somebody. 18 years ago, my current employer gave this Dorchester kid an opportunity and through education, and they provided the tools for me to be successful, and I'm appreciative of everything they gave me. And, I just want to comment on receiving a job. It's the greatest feeling on the world. Well, thank you for those comments. In fact, the city of Boston just gave another Dorchester kid a great opportunity. And Marty Walsh, Marty Walsh is now... Uh, Marty Walsh is now talking about uh, completing and signing and negotiating a surrounding community agreement. And I always knew Marty Walsh would be a great mayor, and I'm sure he will. Qu yep, right here. Hi, 
um, Megan Kachakala. Um, I'm co-chair of Don't Gamble on Revere, Revere resident. Um, Mayor Rizzo, as a newly married um, woman, I, we hope to raise a family in Revere. Um, and we know that Revere Public Schools would be the best place to educate our kids. First, how do you propose to protect our future children when attending schools in close proximity to the proposed casino? And second, what time will the proposed casino be serving alcohol? Okay. Um, well, let me say this, and I think, uh, I think if uh, Mitch Edis wouldn't mind ad addressing this, uh, I'd like him to talk about it only because um, they've got a history uh, in Connecticut of operating a first-class operation, a first-class gaming facility. And um, uh, they, they have a culture that uh, they, are, they are essentially family-owned, and, and, they, and they have family values. Um, they are going to bring those same values to the city of Revere. And it's one of the things that I personally, as mayor of the city, um, uh, uh, really uh, enjoyed and and uh, was grateful for in my conversations and negotiations with, with Mohegan Sun. Because it's important for me that the residents of this city maintain, not only maintain, but they get a better quality of life as a result of this project, not a worse quality of life. And Mohegan Sun is very committed to their communities in which they operate. And I think I'm going to let Mitch, if you wouldn't mind taking a, a crack at that question uh, about you know, families and how and uh, what type of impacts maybe uh, as a result of your operations down in Connecticut and how that's all worked. Sure. Well, the, your specific question about the liquor service hours, we are subject to the same uh, hours of operation as anything else in the municipality. So there'll be no difference in when the uh, liquor is served at the casino or is served in, you know, Main Street or downtown Revere. So as far as that goes, uh, you should be comfortable with that. You know, we our family-owned business. It's owned by the Mohegan tribe. We've worked on that for a long time. We're very, uh, you know, pro-employee. We create a great environment to work at. When you talk about raising a family, and, and it, the reality is, and when another gentleman before us talked about he worked at Suffolk Downs, or, or he worked in Revere, lived in Revere, lived in Revere, this is an opportunity for jobs to be created for generations, for people to be able to stay in Revere, to have the kind of quality of life that you have, and, and have more jobs created, and have more prosperity being brought to it. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, a a great place where it's not just you know these are these are really good jobs and things you can look forward to where you can actually work as a young family. We have we had 4,500 employees when we opened Mohegan Sun um, 16, 17 years ago, and 1,500 of them are still working there, and many of them were young families like you are when we started and have raised kids and they've gone to school in Montville, in Uncasville, where Mohegan Sun is, and they've, they've grown up there. So we foster a great family environment for our employees, and I think you will find at the end of the day that this is a really good thing for your community. It may be scary, it, it, you may think it's scary at this point, but at the end of the day, the benefits are great, and it creates a good environment for, uh, for the community based on the things that's brought in. Thank you very much, Mitch. Did you have a question, sir? Well, I was speaking to the mayor the other day about uh, this meeting, and I told him that I might prepare some comments, and he said that's fine. I am not a lifelong resident of Revere, I'm sorry to say. I've been here 12 years, and I've grown to love this city and everybody in it. I've never seen a place where people volunteer for so many different things and who are so concerned about everybody that's here, the seniors, the handicapped. It's unbelievable, the spirit in this city, and it's being carried on by Mayor Rizzo. I'd like first to compliment the mayor and his team for their relentless pursuit of a casino in Revere. I would also comment and compliment the city councilors who are all behind him 100% uh, for this project. 
mayor has at times uh, been a bit impatient, or some people have been a bit impatient with such things as late motions at city council meetings. They, like I, do not fully know the details of what the mayor and his team are going through. I can just imagine. It's, just, it's probably just unbelievable. And I would bet that probably 70 or 80% of your time may be uh, concerned with this casino. I'm not sure about that. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor, for maintaining your professional demeanor at all times at these council meetings. I do not intend to speak tonight about the details of the new host community agreement except to say this. Any citizen of Rivia who reads and comprehends this agreement who does not then fully support it is deeply disturbed. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, some who are opposed to the casino, they're concerned about traffic. 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 But do we not need to take into consideration those who are unemployed? Those whose unemployment has run out? By the way, that includes one of my nieces who has been unemployed, who has just lost her unemployment. Uh, compensation. This is a young lady who has a master's degree in business and years of experience in defense related jobs. She's now out of work. If we had in this room, not you, but if we had in this room a group of Revere citizens who are unemployed, who among us would say, I can't help you because there might be an increase in traffic? That's a terrible thing. Revere may be characterized in many different ways, but not lacking in compassion for their fellow citizens. The election on the casino was February 25th. In the last election, the people of Revere approved the casino by 64%. Very good, but maybe not good enough. The people of Everett voted to approve a casino in their community by 87%. What I see is a contest developing between Revere and Everett. As things stand now, Everett is ahead. Why? They approved their casino by 87% and did the same, but with only 64% meeting Revere. It was approved with 64%. Now let's think for a moment about the Gaming Commission. How will they vote? Well, Revere has a spectacular horse racing facility. It is a historic racetrack. And it is a racetrack, those of you who know the horse Seabiscuit, anybody? <laughs> According to Chip, Seabiscuit got its start right over here at Suffolk Downs. <laughs> I don't know which way it is. I'm, I'm not a lifelong resident, sir. Secondly, the first in the nation public beach. Picture, if you can, small trolley cars going from the hotels up at the casino down along Revere Beach. All business along the beach will benefit. People could get on and off to go to a restaurant, to go to a bar, to go to the beach. This is what a destination casino is all about. It isn't just a casino. Revere has other attributes that are extremely important in developing a casino uh, here in Revere. Another thing, signage. How many people here are from Shirley Avenue neighborhood? A big sign listing all the restaurants and the shops on Shirley Avenue. I'm sure Ira would like to hear that. Uh, and by the way, uh, Shirley Avenue is a potential gold mine. Some of the restaurants that are over there today, the ethnic restaurants, are absolutely spectacular, including the bagel bin. <laughs> now let's consider what, whatever it has. I made a list.
being a little facetious there. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> he said, I'm honest. But Everett does have, they have a great plan by Steve Wynn. They have the cleanup of a polluted river. They have a first class mall. So how then does the commission vote? How do they make a final decision? Well, if they are unable to decide, they may very well determine to use the will of the people. What do you mean by the will of the people? Well, let's put it this way. Everett has 87%. After the election, here in Revere, Revere will have 90%. So if you support a casino in the city of Revere, it is imperative. It is imperative that you get out and vote. We need a massive turnout and a yes vote. A first class horse racing track, a beautiful beach, a 90% voter approval. The winner, Revere. Great question, Bill. Great question. <laughs> Um, okay, there's a few hands up. I'm going to try and take them as I see them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to say, I, I appreciate what you said earlier. My name is Tim Bogerman. I'm associate pastor here in Revere. I've been here for seven years, living with or BAV. And uh, I appreciate what you said earlier about this being democracy. I thank you for that. You know, we, we may disagree, but I don't consider you someone who has mental problems or, you know, issues. I think we just disagree. And I respect you. And though we're different sides, I... I support Don Gamble and Revere, I respect the democratic process, and I thank you that you mentioned that as well. Um, the question I have comes along the lines of um, crime often goes up after a five to seven year honeymoon period. You mentioned 90 officers. Uh, actually, if you look at the research, a five to seven year honeymoon period, uh, Grimm's and Mustard research actually shows that. After, if you look at that, uh, what they've done, after a five to seven year honeymoon period, where it stays low, crime actually increases. Now, you mentioned 90 officers, and I think it was 118 officers, 2 million per year for, to both departments. That's, if it were for a fire truck, that'd be a million dollars, right? How would we continue to do that if we're going to have an increase in crime, have an increase in issues throughout the city, and how do we pay for that if the department's only receiving 2 million per department per year? How would we cover some of those issues, and how do we deal with seeing this increase and our insurance rates going down or going up and our value of our houses going down, how do we deal with those issues? How do you address them? Okay, so okay, let's all, let's all, you know, uh, you know, there's a, you know, obviously some concerns, and I and I understand, and we've had this conversation in the past, and. Um, you know, uh, uh, your, you know, every casino or every gaming facility is not the same. Um, if you look, I mean, you know, Las Vegas, you know, people love to compare it to Atlantic City. They love to compare it to Las Vegas. This is a one casino project. And that's why the legislature set it up this way, to only have one per region. We're not going to have any... There's not going to be another casino cropping up in Winthrop and another one cropping up in, in uh, 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 Malden and another one in Lynn. This is one. And um, I, I happen to go down to Mohegan Sun. And, and again, depending upon the facility, I mean, there's a, 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 a facility out in Philadelphia called Sugar, uh, Sugar House? Sugar House. I mean... I read a little bit about it. Not the best run place, in my opinion. Mohegan Sun, on the other hand, took us for a tour, not only out in the gaming floor, but behind the scenes and everywhere else. You know, they opened their doors to let us see what they do there. And, you know, crime is non-existent. You might have somebody that has a few drinks and gets a little bit rowdy like any other establishment, but uh, n no crime to speak of. And they've been there now for 15 or 16 years. 
I met with their head of public safety down there. No problems down there. I mean, you have to look at each individual project. You can't just say, I saw a study and it studied this, 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 and that, and because not every place is the same. The, the, you know, it is not in their best interest. I mean, think about this. Are they going to spend $1.3 billion of their money to run down a community and try and entice people to come to their facility? They want to build this community up, and they want this community to succeed, because if we succeed, Mohegan Sun succeeds. And so, you know, um, so, so, so while, while, while I understand the fears, and I understand the concerns, and you know, you go online and you look at enough information, whether it's, re you know, whether it's in regards to uh, casinos or whether it's in regards, I mean, how many, how many sites are there out there for medical opinions? I mean, every time I go onto a website that offers medical advice, I, I'm ready to check myself into a hospital. So, you know, you, know, you, can, you can read all these different studies, and I'm sure there's competing studies out there that talk about the benefits. It's, it's uh, our intention to, uh, to uh, bring the mayor of Ben Salem up here, uh, who, who uh, uh, continues um, to uh, support, and his business owners in his community and his residents in his community continue to support bringing gaming to his community, which, by the way, has a horse track in it. There is all these fears that people had did not come to fruition and have not come to fruition. It's been nothing but a boon for the city. So, and you know, he's going to come around, and he's going to talk to our residents, and he's going to talk to business owners and let people know firsthand what he saw. So, but again, sir, I respectfully, uh, you know, uh, uh, disagree with you, but you're entitled to your opinion, and uh, obviously the legislature set this up so we can all go out and take a vote on it and have a say in it. So thank you very much for that. Mitch, would you like to... Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to add, I, I don't know the study you're speaking of. I can only speak to our experience in Connecticut, and we've been there for now 16 years. Crime in the area around has gone down for two reasons. I mean, primarily one, when more people have jobs, you know, there's less crime, and it's better for the community and more law enforcement in the area. So, again, I'm not questioning your, uh, your study. Or, you know, I'm sure if you look at the crime around Sugar House, you know, maybe it is up. But, but based on my experience, after 15 years, it's not what we've seen. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilors. Great job, everybody, really. This is unbelievable, this agreement. Uh, to answer this question real quick, um, the associate pastor over there, um, I, I think there's a way with, with a crime where I think you're, you're getting at. There's one way I can think of right off the top of my head. This is the only place or a casino that's going to be built that has a subway, um, airplanes, all ways out, state police, revere police, and, you know, I, I think they're just, you're just doing a hell of a job, all of you all. And um, God bless you all, and we got to bring it in here. I mean, we can have good and bad and everything, you know, but God works the good through all things, and that's in the Bible, too. God bless you. So I, I have to ask people, you know, I have to go to people that haven't uh, asked a question yet. So... Sorry, sir. One second. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, folks. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I'm one of very few senior citizens that are here this evening. <laughs> but these seniors, folks, fought the battle of Wonderland Park. We won that battle, just as we're going to win the battle for Suffolk Downs. So I want you all, the seniors, Get your grandchildren, your children, and whoever, all your bill collectors, whoever. Get them to the polls. We need the vote. Hi, uh, this question actually is for Mr. Tuttle. Uh, it's nice to see you in person. But I hope I'm not the only horseman here that works in the back stretch. Uh, I've been a horseman nearly all my life. You can say I'm not from around here. You know, but uh, I've been a resident here for about five years now. And uh, after taking a little hiatus from my family farm down in the bottom of Rhode Island, I was given the opportunity to work at Suffolk Downs, and it, uh, it came back full impact to me. 
Matter of fact, I'm, I'm actually uh, looking forward to starting an apprenticeship with the blacksmiths there, so I'm, it's, it's going to be good. I am really excited about that. But my question uh, for you is, will the, the uh, racing days be extended, and uh, will the track, the protection of the track, be in the literature of the agreement? I don't, I don't know what language we included in the host community agreement about the track. I'm gonna, I don't think there is any, but yeah, um, but, but let me tell you about our commitment to racing and, and I'm, I'm glad you've been here for the, the last five years and, and hope that you're here for another 25 or 30. Um, we, we sent a letter, as the mayor said, uh, we sent a letter to the Gaming Commission. The Gaming Commission, in addition to regulating gaming facilities, regulates the racetrack. So they're our regulator. <laughs> and in that letter, we, we've we been saying for years, for the last five or six years, that uh, gaming development on the property ensures uh, racing's best chance for success. And that was true on November 5th, and it's true today. Uh, on earlier in the process, Suffolk Downs was actually an applicant for the license. Now Mohegan Sun is an applicant for the license as our tenant. Uh, but we're going to honor our commitment to racing regardless. So we have pledged to race for at least, uh, and, and we hope beyond, but for at least the initial duration of a license should Mohegan Sun win a license, and that's 15 years. But that 15 years begins the day that gaming occurs on the property, not the day the license is awarded. So that's really a 17 or 18 year extension of racing as a, at a minimum. In terms of the number of days, uh, we're going to have to work hard with the horsemen over the next couple of years because if we're successful and Mohegan Sun's successful in earning a license, I think there's going to be a little bit of disruption in terms of uh, moving the barn area and, and things like that. But we're committed to racing for the long haul. We're committed to enhancing purses and making a better experience for the racing customer. And uh, we have we said in the letter that we sent the commission today that we would support a concept that ties the minimum number of race days to the available purse money. So if there's 25 million in available purse money to run, we'd race more days. If there's 15 million, we'd race fewer days. And that's a, an ongoing conversation we'll have with the horsemen, but that's a problem I hope we, we get a chance to have. Hey, Dan. Frank Gucciati. Um, my question is, uh, my, my daughter's old. She's in college. So I'll, the money that's going into the schools and all that, that's great. I appreciate it. It's awesome. Everyone has their opinion to say what they want. The parking lot at Beachmont train station, do we, is that going to be gone? Is that going to disappear? No. Is there a chance that you can make a parking lot just for the, the, the residents of Revere, free parking to go to work in Boston every day? East Boston gets free windows, free uh, insulation. Chelsea pays 50 cents for the Tobin Bridge. They pay 25 cents for the tunnel. The plane flies over my house, you know? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that we can put in there to maybe sweeten the deal for us? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I. I'm open to providing every benefit and every amenity that I possibly can for Revere residents. This is a great opportunity for us. But, and, there's, and, there's, and there's an awful lot of requests that I get from people um, regarding many, many different projects. I mean, it's hard for me to say here uh, at a discussion about the host community agreement that I could ever commit to something like taking over an MBTA parking lot, making it free parking, or doing anything like that. Is it worthy of a discussion? It absolutely is. Um, but when you think about all the other benefits, I mean, that just right off the top of my head that I discussed tonight, I mean, you know, I, I respect the fact that you don't have anybody within the school system right now, but, you know, do you own a home here? Uh, uh, you know, I mean, property tax relief's got to mean something. Water rate relief's got to mean something to you. So there are benefits that you're going to get and see as a result of this project that, um, you, know, uh, 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 you know, will be tangible. And, you know, but again, if that's a request you have, we could certainly talk about that, okay? And, uh, you know, let's see. You know, we throw out this $40 million number, right? 
What happens if Mohegan Sun is wildly successful and now they exceed that billion dollars? I mean, those numbers continue to go up because we structured this host community agreement uh, to allow Revere, as Mohegan Sun goes, so goes the city of Revere with the exception of the minimums. We're always going to get a minimum, but there's no maximum. So as they do better, the city of Revere will do better. We'd have to have a discussion with the MBTA. We can't arbitrarily go in and take their property. Similar to they can't come in and take our property. That, that's been an MBTA parking lot long before I took over as mayor and who knows. So, you know, but uh, again, you know, we can, you know, we can talk about the parking lot for sure uh, as time goes along. You know, we're, right now, we're, we're, we're at the stage where we're in competition for a license and we need every Revere resident to recognize the benefits that are included within this host community agreement and go out and support it on February 25th. That's the stage we're at right now. With conversations we can have about how we're going to spend the money uh, down the road in addition to what we've already laid out and discussed. So, um, but, uh, but safe to say there'll be a lot of benefits for Revere residents. Yeah, Vin. Does everybody know Vin Camerata? Vinny? Vinny has a folder. Vinny has a folder of letters to the editor that he has written in support that has been published in both the Globe, the Herald, the Journal. And uh, he is just a tremendous guy and been a staunch supporter of this project at Suffolk Downs. If there's anybody that should, should get a round of applause, it's this gentleman right here. So. Can you hear me? January 2nd, 2014, anti-casino groups unite. I was not too happy about that. So I wrote a letter to the Revere Journal and to the Boston Herald. The Revere Journal is very helpful to all of us. They write, print all our letters, at least my letters anyway. I'm going to read the letter. Bear with me, please. Herald Column by Jordan Graham, January 2nd, 2014. Anti-casino groups unite. Why do these anti-casino groups fight progress for city and towns that would improve the way of living for the cities and the local communities? The improvements come in the form of tax revenues, most importantly jobs for hardworking people in East Boston and Revere. Employees at Suffolk Downs were mostly people from East Boston and Revere, and the casino would further enhance jobs, opportunities for these individuals. Why don't these anti-casino do-gooders unite and concentrate on the serious crimes being committed in all of our communities, especially against the most vulnerable, our youth, even babies, not to mention just innocent people walking down the street. I imagine you people see that on TV. I'm not making the story up. East Boston, friends of Suffolk Downs, don't be coerced by the anti-casino do-goodos, do-goodies, I'm sorry. Success at Suffolk Downs means success for Revere, East Boston, and surrounding communities. East Boston, please, join Revere Come and hold signs on February 25th, 2014. That letter was printed in the Revere Journal. Thanks to the Revere Journal. Thanks to you, Dan. You're doing a great job. Anybody else have a question? Um, so as you pointed out, my name is Celeste Myers. I am head of No Easty Casino, uh, the anti-casino organization from East Boston. Some folks argue that I have no right being here today, but as an impacted neighbor that just lives right over the line from Beachmont, I feel very comfortable here considering Mohegan Sun feels free to bring their landlord with them. Um, naturally, I have lots of opinions and things to say, but really I'm here tonight to say that I'm here to support the efforts here in um, 
Revere that have sprung up organically. They reached out to us for our support. We're going to be there. Um, I want to thank you for hosting this forum here tonight. I hope it's televised so that the 4,200 plus Revere residents that voiced a concern at the ballot box on November 5th have an opportunity to have access to some of this dialogue. Um, and I encourage you to do more. Um, to address assertions by this gentleman over here and Mr. Cherloni, this is not a Revere versus Everett, and yourself as well, this is not a Revere versus Everett only question and dialogue. As we did in East Boston, we took care of East Boston. The Revere residents can take care of Revere. The statewide repeal effort will take care of kicking it out of the Commonwealth for good. This is um, not an ideal uh, industry for the Commonwealth. We can do better, we can do more. Um, and, and uh, excuse me, excuse me, I didn't heckle anybody else. I didn't heckle anybody else. Um, and as you have warned the residents of Revere to be wary of well-organized, well-funded outsiders, I will echo that sentiment, but the well-organized, well-funded outsider is not me. You're looking at Mohegan Sun, um, who are, they're not from around here. They um, have, I don't know how well their funding's going considering they laid off over 300 employees in this past uh, 2013. Um, there is some sentiment coming from the pro casino folks in Palmer that described that their initial application was disingenuous and meant to safeguard their revenues that are ever faltering. Um, and then there's the folks at Suffolk Downs. Um, as soon as things didn't go their way, they divested of the responsibility to the Suffolk Downs employees. They were legally removed the development of the track, um, the development of the casino from being responsible for the track. There are three mechanisms in place within this casino conversation that would have made them legally bound to um, uh, support continued growth and continued employment at the track. That would be the initial um, gaming bill that required it, which is why they divested themselves of the track. That would be the application where they could have outlined responsibilities to the track. And that would be the host community agreement where they could further state um, their allegiance to the track. So this other letter, all, although nice in its sentiment, is not binding and not legal. So really, I, I encourage folks to, if you have concerns, um, speak them, voice them, continue to ask the questions, know that we beat it in East Boston, you can beat it in Revere, and to look at the fine prints. Thank you. Well, just to, uh, you know, that letter, is part of the application, so you know that it's going to continue racing for 17 years. Mohegan Sun could not commit uh, where they're now um, uh, a tenant on the property. They do not have an ownership interest in racing, and therefore we could not put it in the agreement. But I'll tell you this, it's always been a major concern of mine and will be a continued concern of mine to keep racing like over there that it's been there for 78 years. So I don't think it's fair to... Uh, to try to uh, uh, mislead people by saying that the commitment to racing is not there because clearly it's been there, will continue to be there, and I think by virtue of the application, um, it, will, it will absolutely keep racing in place. So, any other questions? Uh, any other questions? Okay, there's a couple people um, right over here. Do you want to use one of these microphones here? Yes, um, my husband, lifelong resident of Revere, his grandparents moved here. I used to come here with my dad to visit Paisans when I was younger. And I agree with you, I think Revere is beautiful. Revere Be Beach is one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen. But I think like a lot of cities, uh, I, I think Revere has fallen on hard times over the last generation. I think the casino would be a wonderful thing for the city of Revere. Um, you know, I've seen it with other cities. I, it, I grew up in the South Shore. We, we saw a revitalization of South Boston, Rosendale, all of those small cities that fell on hard times over the past generation. This is the perfect opportunity for Revere to put money into their schools, their infrastructures, the beach, which I agree is one of the most beautiful beaches on the eastern seacoast. So um, that being said, I think the casino would be a wonderful thing. I'm not quite sure where people are getting the images of casinos and crimes, maybe TV or something. I mean, if you've, if you've gone to Mohican Sun, it's beautiful. 
the architecture down there is beautiful, and it's entertainment. They have people who come and perform. Yes, people gamble, but you know, lots of times they spend a couple hundred dollars in the slots. You know, there's some drinking that goes on, but I don't know where you're getting this image of this big crime center that casinos bring in. But anyways, my question is, if this goes forward for Revere, which I think Revere deserves it, it's a beautiful city, when can we, when is the grand opening? December. <laughs> December 2016. You know, if I could just say something, because you just raised a very valid point, and I think that Oftentimes, people hear the word casino, and there's this negative connotation that goes with it. There's going to be 130,000 square feet of retail shopping, restaurants, spas, hotels. This is going to be a true resort-style destination location. It's not just going to... If you want to go in and spend a few dollars on, the, on a slot machine or, or some other gaming device, you know, then it's there. It's been legalized in Massachusetts, but this, we're looking at this more about uh, an entertainment type experience for people and a destination for people to come that's going to reinvigorate our, our long-standing tradition of welcoming people here uh, for recreational purposes, to enjoy our beautiful beachfront, to enjoy all the other amenities that are going to come as a result of this project. So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you very much for that, you know, for those comments. Um, okay, one second. Him first. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Bob Upton. I happen to be president of the Revere Chamber of Commerce. And, you know, this evening I'm here and I'm very much enthusiastically supporting uh, this proposal because many of our business owners and members of the Chamber of Commerce are very much supportive of this. But I'm also here in support of Suffolk Downs. You know, Suffolk Downs has been a member of the, a very positive force with the Revere Chamber of Commerce uh, for a very long time. They've been a great community partner. They're great to the nonprofit organizations within this city. They've been helping us to, to build the membership in the Chamber of Commerce. Just today, Mitchell Edis and the other representatives from uh, Mohegan Sun uh, joined the Chamber of Commerce. They asked us to generate an invoice to them so they could be also uh, active members of the Revere Chamber of Commerce. And for me personally, that's a real shot in the arm for us at the Chamber of Commerce as we're trying to build our membership and grow our business opportunities in this community. I also will say as a Revere Beach enthusiast, and I know many people do know that, you know, travel and tourism is not new to this community. For many, many years we had Wonderland Park, Suffolk Downs, and Revere Beach operating all at the same time. There was lots and lots of business opportunity in this area. So I, for one, am very much supportive of this proposal at America's first public beach, the city and the home to that public beach, and for this developmental opportunity. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to take a couple more questions, okay? It's getting a little bit late, so I'm going to take a couple more questions. There will be other forums, so if you, if you don't get a chance to ask your question, you can certainly um, call my office, or I know Mitch or Chip are happy to answer questions, uh, or certainly attend one of the future public forums, okay? So. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, you mentioned a few minutes ago about um, the number of retail spaces and the number of uh, restaurants on the property. Um, and one thing that I'm really concerned about is um, small businesses in the area. So I'm wondering um, what are specific ways that you're going to get the patrons of the casino to leave the casino and go to the small businesses on the street? That's an excellent question. And uh, obviously, that's been a concern of mine since the beginning of this discussion. Uh, I see Mitch raising his hand. I think that... You're I the mayor. You can answer. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? I've been talking all night. You give me a break. Go ahead, Mitch. It's a great answer. question. And it's a very unique uh, aspect of what we're going to be doing here. I don't know how familiar you are, maybe not familiar with how casinos work, but we, you know, people play. They earn comp points as they go. In, in general... Um, you can redeem those points in your casino and, and, and comp yourself and use those. We are extending that opportunity out into the community. And we are going around, I think we so far have 100, uh, Gary, 100 businesses signed up where people will be able to actually take their points and use them at outside businesses. So I don't know if you have a business, you have a flower shop, you have a restaurant, you will be able to participate. <laughs> 
as as someone at the casino. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, as someone at the casino would be. So we're really, you know, and that's money that, that's comp money, the money is coming from the casino right into the community. So not only will there be jobs created and people having money to spend at local businesses, but we'll be actually encouraging and setting up a forum and a way for casino patrons to actually spend their comp points directly in the local community. Yeah, yeah and... Um yeah, so, and if, if uh, I could just add to that, I mean, they're, they're going to be holding actual vendor forums to attract uh, and, and, and retain more local businesses because the philosophy is very much different uh, for an urban-style casino uh, in these type of settings that are now cropping up throughout the country. It's no longer like the Las Vegas or Atlantic City mentality when these casinos want to keep you inside for as long as they can for their own personal gain. Well, there's only going to be one casino here. Um, you know, as I said before, it's in their best interest to 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 raise our community, to 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 make their surroundings a better place for people to want to come and visit. And so, rather than want to keep people inside and spend all their money inside and dine inside and do all that other stuff, which they will have those opportunities, but. They want to actually drive people outside the casino and into the communities to uh, solicit local business and local restaurants and local flower shops and transportation companies and all the different businesses that I know we have he right here in the city of Revere. That's why there's so much enthusiasm. If you had the opportunity to come today to the Chamber of Commerce luncheon, you would have seen probably 150 different business owners there excited and chomping at the bit waiting for this to happen because they know what it's going to mean to them in, in terms of increased revenue. Ten million dollars, forget the point system, they're going to spend ten million dollars on goods and services that they're going to buy themselves from local businesses. So this is not going to hurt local business, this is going to allow our local businesses to expand and grow. So that's a very positive byproduct of the project. All right, one last question and then I have to, one last question. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, possibly more of a comment slash rebuttal, but if the opposition is counting on the state Supreme Court allowing a revote in November to repeal, that's great. We're worried about now, February 25th. We can't not keep going forward with Revere Yes, because if it's not Revere Yes, then it's Everett. And to get to Everett, you're going to go through Revere. So. <laughs> Let's support Revere. If the state, in its wisdom, does something different in the fall, that's out of our hands right now. Right now, it's all about February 25th and supporting Revere. Well, I think that was, uh, I think that was a great way to wrap up. And so, um, so uh, on, really, uh, I just want to thank all of you. February 25th is the date of the next election. There will be other public forums. Check the city's website. I want to thank all of you for your participation and look forward to a successful vote on February 25th. Thank you.